This is the flywheel cover. It slots neatly onto the engine, but um, this part is a throwaway. There's a couple of minor defects. So we're going to look at the defects on the cover just to show you what I mean. So there's pitting um, around here, and that's because I hadn't quite sanded the pattern down enough on one of the edges and it kicked a little bit of sand into the mold. The foundry wanted to do better, so this was a bin job, um, but I've managed to get my hands on it for test purposes. So in this video, we're going to make a fixture for holding the flywheel cover as it is a fairly complex shape with no real flats and no really good way to hold it. And then after that, we're going to finish assembling the top end uh, of the engine, and then we're going to fire it up for the first time. So exciting stuff. To make this fixture, the first thing I had to do was set up the milling machine. So I placed on the vise, trammed that in square, and then put in my MT3 3 quarter inch collet so I can use my quick change tool holders. From there I took my XY datum off the fixed jaw of the vise, and then it was time to get into machining. So the material is MDF, that's medium density fiberboard, um, and it comes in an 18 millimeter thickness. I laminated uh, three pieces together, which has given me a nice chunk to 3D machine the fixture from. Once it was all squared up, because I took that datum off of the fixed jaw, it was really quick to set up in the vise, and all I had to do was load in my 10mm ball-nosed end mill. Now, as of the video, I only had one ER20 10mm collet, so I had to take out my edge finder and replace it. The actual 3D machining took a little while, so there is no sound as I filmed this as a time lapse, but on screen you can see the relative speeds and feeds. I probably could have done it way faster, but it would have left a lot more sanding on the other end. So this here is the fixture, it is just MDF, um, and it is 3D machined. The flywheel cover fits in there very snug. This will be perfect for holding it, just for drilling holes essentially. We're not going to be doing any heavy machining in this fixture, as it is only MDF, which is medium density fiberboard really stable, really flat, machines quite well, it makes a bit of dust, but for a cheap fixture, um, I don't think I can beat it. So I don't have my lapel microphone, so the audio might be a bit trash, but um, 
everything is now here for the production version of the Hustler V Twin. Um, I've even got all my uh, 3D printed aluminium parts, which is pretty sweet, nice and lightweight. Um, they look really professional, the manifolds. So that's what we've got there. So now it is going to be the final assembly um, prior to test running and then a strip down to make sure everything goes as it should. So before assembling the entire engine properly, I have to test the lubrication system and make sure oil is going to where it needs to go. You can see here we have the oil drain. So what I'm going to do, because I'm throwing it away anyway, just drain it into this waste container. Um, I don't remember it's just hand tight at the moment so I'll get it nice and loose and then we'll just let it drain away into the container so because the oil's cold and it's about five degrees outside it's not going to drain very quickly anyway yeah, there we go and I'll just leave it like that for the next five ten minutes and let it drain so what I've got to do is put on the base gaskets here and here um, and then I have to place on the cylinders and ensure I get the um, timing correct for the cams so we've got this awesome 3d printed piece uh, it's aluminium and it goes on here and its job is to hold the ignition coils So the holes uh, still need to be drilled and tapped, uh, M6 for the coils. Uh, I was too chicken to print the threads in there, I know you can print um, threads into 3D prints, but I thought I'd uh, save that for this and just tap them by hand. Now how good is this, this is my 5mm drill bit. It's perfect, it just slides in there, that's how good this uh, 3D printed aluminium is. So I've already started, I've got the oil control ring on, um, I'll put on the other two rings. I'll put the steel ring at the top, with the little letters on them up here. You might see them, you might not, yep. And I'll just have those facing upwards and then the... Uh, black, it almost feels like plastic, uh, this ring will go below, this will be the second ring. I've gone around a few places, um, I've gotten some quotes locally about how much it's going to cost to actually get this thing manufactured. Now, you know, bearing in mind, other than the cylinders, you know, and some of the internal bits, majority of it's either made or designed by me um, here in New Zealand and you know as a one-off engine it is pretty special these quotes just need to come in at a point where there's enough there's enough fat you know enough margin that I can keep doing this and make these engines a commercially sort of viable venture so usually what I'll do is assemble half of the piston and before we put the piston on what we're going to do is a little hole in the top there make sure the rods oiled up nice and lubricated everything is nice and clean you can start installing it into the piston we have to slide it down from the top because of the how it's designed I'm doing this blind, uh, kind of for the camera. Might get in the way for a sec there. That's not going to work. Oh, there we go. No. Slid straight in. 
Now, what you don't want to do with your circlips is have them like this. Because as the engine goes up and down, they can compress and bounce out. So you actually want to rotate them 90 degrees. Uh, so the gap is either at the bottom or at the top. So I'm going to get into that now, rotating the circlip. Very easy. Nice and seated. So now what I've got to do is place on the cylinder. So the base gasket is already on the cylinder. And then I just have to feed the cam chain up and through. Probably the best way to do that is using a magnet uh, to help guide it. There we go, there we have it. There is the cylinder, or the first cylinder mounted to the case. So everything is buttoned up tight. I've primed the carbs with a little bit of fuel. And now we're gonna hook up the electric start and see what happens. Uh, we're just gonna cough it into life because I'm inside and yeah, it has no mufflers on it. I just need to know, will it start? There's a little bit of fuel in the carbs. And I'll touch the lead onto the battery. I don't like this, so I'll move this out the way just while it starts up. 